Imagine this. You're stationed on a massive U.S. Navy ship, a technological marvel ruling the waves. Suddenly, a crack of thunder splits the sky, followed by a blinding flash. Lightning strikes. But can a ship built to withstand anything really be brought down by a bolt of electricity? The answer might surprise you. On Navy Sea Life Today, we're setting sail into the electrifying world of lightning strikes and U.S. Navy ships. We'll explore the dangers these strikes pose, the impact they can have, and how these incredible vessels are designed to weather the storm. So, batten down the hatches and get ready for a shockingly good time. Lightning is a tad bit different from all the other threats faced by these ships. This natural phenomenon is one of the most spectacular yet chaotic displays of atmospheric electricity, and it cares not for military prowess or engineering grandeur. Bear in mind that every U.S. Navy ship is made tough with steel frames. Unexpectedly, they have some of the most powerful weapons on board. These floating fortresses, so to speak, seem impossible to beat. But even the thick hulls and tall antennas on these big ships can't stop lightning. Lightning makes big flashes of electricity in the sky with the sole aim of reaching the ground fast, be it through a tree, a metal pole, or a U.S. Navy ship. For ships on the water, the mast or radio tower often gives lightning the quickest path down and U.S. Navy ships have quite a few of them. It's to be noted that U.S. Navy ships often take on journeys far out into the ocean, where sending and receiving signals become impossible. But regardless of that, the ships need to navigate and communicate, right? So you'll see many masts and radio towers carrying high-tech equipment for these purposes. Obviously, this comes with its challenges when lightning hits these high up points. It can cause both minor and major problems for everyone on board. As a matter of fact, the electricity dispensed by strong enough lightning strikes could even burn holes in the decks or follow wires down to the equipment below and break a ton of technological infrastructure. We're diving into the safety measures soon, but every U.S. Navy ship generally makes sure that it's able to channel lightning from the sky through its steel hull down to the ocean water. But a strong and big enough lightning bolt could be too much, even for the best protective measures. Nature shows us that no matter how good people make things, he still controls the oceans. The supposed king of the waves can become as helpless as the smallest boat in a thunderstorm. When lightning strikes, not even the proudest Navy fleet is in charge. It hits wherever it wants, and that's why it's arguably a threat greater than all else. Impact and Aftermath If a powerful lightning bolt were to hit a U.S. Navy vessel during operations at sea, it would likely create an emergency situation with both immediate and long-term impacts. In the initial moments after the strike, the ship and crew would experience significant disruption and damage from the massive electrical discharge. At the point of impact, a blinding flash and thunderous explosion would occur as the bolt delivered unimaginable electricity, igniting any flammable materials near this point of contact, such as fuel or paint supplies. The resulting fires pose a serious life safety hazard and would require the immediate deployment of damage control teams carrying fire extinguishers. And as we all know, fire on board in the middle of the ocean, though ironic, poses a significant danger to everyone. In addition to the fire starting, the electromagnetic pulse from the lightning can induce surges that short-circuit key electronic systems on board. Vital radar, communications equipment, and navigation instruments controlling the ship's awareness and directionality may abruptly malfunction or shut down. Without these sensors functioning properly, the vessel loses the situational picture of its surroundings and the ability to coordinate with other allied ships. You can picture it as a ship in the middle of the ocean with no directions or communication. 
crew members who happened to be near the strike location also faced direct danger from the electricity. Those exposed would risk electric shock injuries ranging from mild nuisance shocks to more severe burns, depending on proximity. Medical aid would need to be rapidly provided by on-scene corpsmen and to any personnel experiencing trauma effects. Triage and stabilization of critical patients could be necessary before more definitive care. Luckily though, there are medical teams on board almost every U.S. Navy ship out there. If we take an example from the crew on board U.S. Navy aircraft carriers, they're all trained to tackle anything and everything. In the event of a lightning strike, the first on scene would be the damage control teams, which are essential to containing any immediate fallout from the strike. Sprinting to the impacted area with firefighting gear in hand, their top priority is extinguishing any ignited areas before they can escalate out of control. Alongside suppressing visible flames, these sailors work to methodically inspect for more insidious threats like ruptured pipes or leaking fuel tanks. With the initial firefight underway, medical teams, as mentioned before, rush in to provide emergency first aid to potentially injured crew members. Note that Navy corpsmen and doctors work side by side, swiftly assessing injuries, stabilizing critical patients, and delivering those in need of heightened care to the carrier's onboard surgical hospital. In the engineering spaces below, electrical repair teams isolate compromised systems to prevent subsequent damage. Armed with high voltage meters and tools, these technicians work around the clock to identify faulty components and commence restoration efforts. On the bridge, navigation and communication teams combine forces to reinstate situational awareness, while radar technicians analyze sensors for malfunctions. Signalmen boost transmission strength on alternate communication lines to maintain contact until primary systems can be brought back online. Firefighting teams then pick up where damage control left off, rotating watches to completely extinguish even the smallest smoldering embers. And throughout, damage assessment teams thoroughly canvass the immense vessel, meticulously cataloging every damaged piece of equipment to support the lengthy restoration projects ahead. It's only through the dynamic interplay of these diverse units that the ship can successfully bounce back from a ceiling-piercing bolt of lightning at sea. But once the initial emergency period is managed and the extent of damage assessed, it becomes clear that the effects go far beyond the moment of impact. Inspections would reveal the massive surge also introduced high voltages to onboard wiring and damaged electronic components through short circuits. Fixing these systems presents long-term maintenance challenges, since the amount of wiring essentially webbed around larger U.S. Navy ships such as aircraft carriers is unimaginably complex. Specialized repairs and recalibration measures stretch over weeks as around-the-clock efforts are needed by technical crews. All the while, the ship operates with reduced capabilities while primary systems are offline. Another point worth noting is that such repair cycles strain schedules, resources, and crew endurance. Contractors may need to support specialty repairs beyond organic shipyard abilities. Only port visits provide access to specialized vendors and hard-to-obtain replacement parts. Nevertheless, by the end of a full-blown lightning strike, a U.S. Navy ship is likely left with significant damage to electronic systems, an intensive maintenance workload, and reduced operational capabilities until restoration can be completed. While the immediate emergency response mitigates life safety risks, the long-term effects of repairs and capability reductions present ongoing challenges for crew and operations. Thorough training, rapid damage control, and resilient personnel are vital to managing the complex multi-phase impacts of such a powerful electrical event at sea. It goes to show how dangerous Mother Nature can be at times, right? 
threat beyond the ships. At this point, we know all too well that a lightning strike is no joke and its effects are significant. But do you ever think about the U.S. Navy aircraft? Note that one of the biggest U.S. Navy ships, the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier, can hold up to 90 aircraft, though most of them are typically parked in the below deck hangar bay when not in use. Some jets may have just landed or been preparing for takeoff on the flight deck during a lightning strike. So what if one of the aircraft parked on the deck gets hit with a lightning bolt? And what if it's hit while in the air? Well, there are discernible correlations between specific flight conditions and the likelihood of lightning strikes. The U.S. Navy has almost 3,000 aircraft in operation, so the chances of such an event wouldn't be too low, but are still pretty negligible regardless. Note that these incidents are more frequently reported during the ascent and descent phases of flight typically occurring between altitudes of 5,000 and 15,000 feet, with a significantly reduced risk above 20,000 feet. As we can expect, lightning strike reports are predominantly associated with rainy weather near freezing temperatures and flights within cloud cover. Interestingly, the two seasons most commonly linked to aircraft lightning strikes are spring and summer, it's crucial to note that lightning strikes on aircraft do not necessarily require the presence of thunderstorms or convective activity, as nearly half of all such incidents reported by pilots occur when thunderstorms are not immediately nearby. In fact, some lightning strikes on aircraft can deliver a staggering amount of energy, reaching up to one gigajoule. To put this into perspective, this is ample energy to power a standard refrigerator for about 30 weeks. That's no joke. As you can imagine, the immense energy discharged during these strikes can be highly destructive. But today, the Federal Aviation Administration implements rigorous regulations to ensure aircraft can withstand lightning strikes effectively. In fact, it is entirely possible for an aircraft to experience a lightning strike during flight without the fighter pilots even realizing it, due to the stringent safety measures in place. Now, do you have experience sailing in the ocean or flying on a plane during thunderous weather? What was the experience like? Let us know in the comments below. Protecting the Mighty Ships even though the U.S. Navy crew would typically handle the initial emergency and minimize serious consequences, it also expectedly employs a multifaceted strategy to mitigate the risk of lightning strikes on its vessels, prioritizing the safety of its personnel and the integrity of the ship's systems. These precautionary measures are essential for safeguarding the well-being of the crew and the uninterrupted functionality of Navy vessels. Contemporary vessels are typically outfitted with lightning protection systems. These systems are typically situated atop the ship's highest point, often referred to as the Monkey Island, extending down towards the hull. These systems incorporate strategically positioned lightning rods, known as air terminals, designed to attract lightning strikes. By doing so, they provide a controlled pathway for an electrical discharge to follow, effectively diverting it away from the critical systems and personnel. Incorporating strict safety protocols for crew members during thunderstorms is another pivotal aspect. Personnel undergo rigorous training to seek refuge in designated safe zones away from the conductive surfaces, abstain from contact with metal objects, and disconnect or deactivate non-essential electrical systems. These precautions collectively reduce the risk of electrical shock or equipment damage. Moreover, advanced weather radar and lightning detection systems are employed to monitor approaching thunderstorms. This enables these ships to make informed decisions, such as altering their course or implementing additional precautions to avoid the most severe weather conditions. Routine maintenance and inspections of the ship's lightning protection system are also conducted to uphold their effectiveness. 
Any identified damage or wear in components is promptly addressed through repairs or replacements to maintain the system's reliability. In tandem with these preventive measures, U.S. Navy personnel receive comprehensive training and education encompassing lightning safety protocols and familiarity with the operation of lightning protection systems. This ensures their readiness to respond to lightning threats and adhere to established safety protocols, just like earlier when we pictured such a scenario. Furthermore, the U.S. Navy allocates resources to ongoing research and development initiatives, aiming to enhance the efficacy of its lightning protection measures. These endeavors encompass the exploration of innovative technologies and materials with the goal of augmenting safety and optimizing system performance. These endeavors encompass the exploration of innovative technologies and materials with the goal of augmenting safety and optimizing system performance. If you want to show your appreciation and respect for our Navy sailors, you can now become a member by clicking the link in the description or by going to the home page and clicking on join. Show your support and appreciation for the brave men and women of the Navy and learn more about the maritime world. Support this channel and become a member today. So there you have it, a shocking look at lightning strikes and U.S. Navy ships. From the immediate dangers to the long-term effects, these strikes are a serious threat. But the Navy isn't taking any chances. With lightning protection systems, safety protocols, and ongoing research, they're working hard to keep their ships and crews safe. If you enjoyed this high-voltage exploration, hit that like button and subscribe for more Navy Sea Life adventures. And while you're at it, consider joining our channel to show your support for our brave sailors. See you next time.